Brothers and sisters of the chapter, welcome on in. This is Spruce and Studs, and today we are going to be doing an epic comparison between a McFarlane action figure and a Joy Toy action figure. What are we going to be comparing, by the way? We are going to be comparing two Sisters of Battle, and we're going to pit them next to each other and see which one is going to take the supreme cake of which is the better action figure. So we're going to be looking at the McFarlane version of the Order of the Martyred Lady as well as the Joy Toy version of the same exact figure. So we are going to be looking loosely at five different categories. We're going to be first looking at paint quality, paint color, posability, armaments, and finally, general sisters of battle goodness or whatever it is. So many of you longtime subscribers know that I am quite biased toward Joy Toy action figures because they tend to have a little bit more depth on the color and I just like them better. But is this going to be the time in which the McFarlane figure is going to be number one in my book? Well, we'll just have to see, so let's jump right on in. And on the left corner, we have the McFarlane offering of the Sisters of Battle. And opposing the McFarlane action figure is Joy Toys offering. We shall now see who's going to reign supreme. So let's just take a look at the overall paint quality. We're going to start off with the McFarlane action figure on the left-hand side. So just like my old videos... I'm going to be very, very nitpicky here, and some people may think this to be a little bit cringe, but hey, we're judging this on paint quality. So let's just take a look at it. Taking a look at the lenses over here, you've got a little bit of overpaints on both sides. We're going to take a look at the pauldrons over here, and there's some oversprays over here as well on the fleur-de-lis. Then flip this around. With the symbol over here, it looks generally pretty decent, but as you can see over here, it has a little bit of black showing where it actually should be white. And then taking a look at the center region of this action figure, the painting actually looks pretty decent. We are staying well within the lines. It's very clean. No issues over here whatsoever with the hose here, as well as the symbol and the necklace that is dangling down. There are absolutely no painting imperfections here with the fabric whatsoever. With the accessories and satchels, again, these are very, very clean. No painting issues whatsoever. And moving on to this loincloth region, there are no painting issues whatsoever because this is actually a completely separate piece. We're going to take a look at the kneecaps and the skulls generally tend to look pretty good. But there are some undersprays here where the white is not covering the black. And the same goes over here. And we're going to take a look at the armaments here. And generally the armaments look pretty good. I mean, this is a solid monochrome gray color. So there really can't be any painting issues whatsoever. There's a little bit of an overspray of the gunmetal to the black on here but I believe that's really the only issue that I can find on this chainsaw. As the Joy Toy version currently has a bare head on it, I'm going to actually be reviewing it based off of the helmeted version here. So we're looking at the lenses. It appears that there's a little bit of white that should be covered up by the red. And then looking at this kind of earpiece itself, there are areas in which it would be nice that it was actually covered by silver. So we're going to put this down and then look at the action figure itself. The fleur-de-lis looks rather clean. I don't think that there's any over or under sprays as I believe this is actually a completely separate piece. And with the symbol over here, I think the shading actually is a little bit messy. You get to see a lot of dark areas and then a paint splotch here. So we're going to be looking at the arm area. If you look at this area, it looks like there's too much overspray on the red onto the black regions. And then if you're looking at the highlights on this action figure too, I would have to say that this these highlights are kind of messily and hastily done. So let's take a look at the rosary type of area. And we are looking at some mist shading over here. This looks okay in my opinion, but it looks messy in the middle of the icon right here. Then moving on to the cape and the loincloth, it appears that the shading is rather uneven in these recesses. So we're going to put this down and then we're going to take a look at the various bolt weapons here. So you got the bolt pistol here and then the bolt gun right here. 
And I'll have to say that the dry brushing on the bulk gun is fairly rough, as you can see. Then flipping around to the other side, it's a little bit better, but you can see some trailing of some dry brushing that's going on. And I believe that this is the same case on this side. And taking a look at the power sword on this action figure, it looks fairly clean to me. No big issues, in my opinion, right here on the blade. There is a little bit of an overspray of the gold onto the red area. So what's my verdict? I'll be honest with you, the paint quality is a lot better on the McFarlane action figure. So right now, the score is McFarlane 1, Joy Toy nothing. Now let's move on to paint color. We are again going to pick up the McFarlane action figure and take a look at the color itself. So just like with all McFarlane styling, this action figure looks kind of flat to me. So as we're looking at the whole entire figure right here, it looks like the figure has pretty much got a singular base coat on here and nothing else whatsoever. For example, right here you get to see this piping and usually with piping you want to get to see some shading here. So within this right here, you should see some black recesses. The same thing with this icon right here. You want to see some shading up here and then some highlights all around here. So as I have said before in a lot of these videos, McFarlane's paint color actually tends to look very, very flat as I'm looking at this. And this part actually, it would benefit greatly if it had some shading on it, as well as highlighting down here with all the intricate designs. So we're gonna put the action figure down and then again, take a look at the color of the bulk gun first. And again, Typically, this bulk gun casing is black. The fleur-de-lis is white. So it looks very dull, like I said in my initial review video. And finally, we're going to look at the chain sword. Again, you want to see a little bit of color differentiation. The handle maybe should be like a red. Maybe this area should be like a gold color. Maybe this area on the chain sword should be gold. And maybe this should be black. The teeth is pretty good with this dark gunmetal color. So picking up the Joy Toy version, it is a completely different story. So we're looking at the paint color here. There is a lot of depth of flavor and a lot of highlighting, a lot of detail and shading that you're seeing here. Within the wings right here, there is definite shading that's going on. So you get to see a lot of depth on this pauldron area. Every single one of these armor panels are highlighted and it just brings a lot of pop out on this action figure. The same thing goes with just this loincloth area. There's a lot of dynamics that are working on here. So it is darker in these recesses and lighter where the folds are the highest. And the same goes on with over here as well. We're going to take a look at this bolt gun as you saw. There are highlights that are going on over here. I think you already know where I'm going to go with this. With the paint color, we already knew that Joy Toy was going to win. So right now, the score is 1-1. One to one. All right, we're going to take a look at the posability over here. And I'll have to say straight off the bat, I think both of them are actually quite posable. Both of them, I believe, have 360 degree head rotation. And this arm here can also rotate roughly 360 degrees. And then this area can rotate 360. There is a double jointed arm here, just like with the Joy Toy action figure. This area also can be rotated 360. Let's take a look at the legs. The legs can be kicked out pretty far up here and then can be kicked pretty far out back. The knees are again double jointed, so you get to do this kind of motion here. And then you also get this characteristic wobbling action going on with the feet area. And for more dynamic posability, the toes can be moved. The same actually goes for the Joy Toy version. The head rotates 360. The arm is also can rotate 360 degrees. So you can move the body 360 degrees, as you can see here. And then with the legs, you can kick it out and you can kick it back, just like with the McFarlane action figure. So all in all, in terms of posability, I think that both of these action figures are quite posable. So I'll have to say that both of them are pretty much equal. I'll give this a two to two tie. So armaments, we've already kind of taken a look at it. 
So you obviously have the bolt gun right here, and then you have the equivalent bolt gun. So this is completely the same. And then you have this power sword on the Joy Toy version versus the McFarlane version. You have a chain sword. I suppose it just comes down to what your preference is, whether you want a chain sword versus a power sword. I personally love power swords, but it actually does come with a decent amount of armaments right here. So who's going to take the cake on this one? I would probably put this as like a three to three tie over here. So the final category is kind of an arbitrary one. It's a Sisters of Battleness kind of thing. And I'll have to say just right off the bat, both of these action figures completely nail it. I really can't fault any of these action figure companies on the renditions of these excellent figures. You got the fleur-de-lis on both of them. Both of them have the symbol here. There's a fleur-de-lis necklace here. There's a rosary down here. Flipping this around, again, fleur-de-lis on the back. And then a bunch of different iconographies. So to be honest, I would have to give this a, a complete tie. To break the dead tie, this is a very, very subjective thing that I'm going to be putting forth. I actually prefer the McFarlane one because it's just bigger. So let me wrap up the results of this grudge match quickly. So were you actually surprised with the results of this very, very informal comparison and grudge match between Joy Toy and McFarlane? I was actually, to be honest, a little bit surprised. Just because before I did this comparison, I didn't know which one I actually preferred until I actually put them side by side. There are a lot of good things to say about both of these action figures as we have reviewed them quite extensively in past videos. I really like the paint color on the Joy Toy version, whereas I love all the texture on the McFarlane one over here. So basically it came down to my subjective size preference and like I said, I preferred the larger size, weirdly enough, on this one. For 20 bucks on the McFarlane one versus the 50-ish dollars for the Joy Toy one, if you are looking for bang for your buck in terms of size, you obviously are going to get more than your money's worth for the McFarlane version. So anyways, thanks for tuning in as usual. I appreciate all of your support on these videos, and I look forward to doing more of these reviews. So once again, thank you all for tuning in. And I'll see you all in the next one.